Previously, we've looked at using pointers, and they've all been used inside the same function. Let's look at how we can use pointers in calling a function to let us expand the capability of that function. Now, functions in C++ have a couple of built-in limitations. For example, they can only return at most one value. And returning that one value means that doing a function called swap, like we see here, is not possible. And if I go and run this, you'll notice that I initialize a value to 5 and 10, and I call swap and the values are still 5 and 10. However, I can pass variables by reference, essentially using pointers. And this is going to open up a little bit of flexibility for me. In C++, I'll just add my star to the end of my variables, as you see here. And I'll need to do it for my temporary variable as well. Now that these three variables are all pointers, I don't have to make any other changes. C++ is smart enough to know that when I'm passing in x and y, which are integers, and I have an integer pointer to pass the reference or the memory location of those variables. By doing so, when I run this application, now swap is swapping the memory addresses. And when we first print out, x is 5 and y is 10, but because we swapped the memory addresses for where those variables point, we now have x is showing a value of 10 and y is a value of 5. Interestingly enough, the memory address is what's changed, not the value stored at those addresses. That's a simple way we can use pointers with a function call in order to swap two variables. And this can be done for other purposes as well. Now, there is another minor change that we can do to this. And that is if we want to pass with using actual pointers instead of just a reference. Notice that here we're using the star to dereference our variables. <coughs> So we're actually going to change the values stored at those locations. To do that, I'll need to swap the x and y when I make the call and pass in the reference as such. When I run, it has the same effect. It's just minor changes in how you do it. I find the first way a little bit simpler and easier personally. However, that doesn't mean that there's not uses for doing both. You just need to learn which is the right time to use which. And sometimes that's based upon what's being given to you based upon a library that you're using or another developer you're working with on the same project.